So if you look at your drum here, you can see how you have this big gap here. Yeah. And there's no gap here. No, I didn't notice that now. Okay. Good. Yeah. So that just means that you started cranking over on this side more mm -hmm. or whoever had it. Yeah. A lot of times they come from a factory kind of like that because they put everything on with a gun. Yeah. So. I'm very like focused on making sure the hoop is on straight mm -hmm. and centered is it really makes it so much easier to tune the drum. Mm -hmm. um, you'll really save a lot of time. Now all I want to do is just basically, oh, in fact, I just put my fingers. Yeah. Just get to where it's not it's really tight. putting any tension on it, but it's just touching the, the hoop. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I'm just going to double check is make sure your hoop is flat. Sometimes it will get like a little bit bow mm -hmm. in them like this because of the uh, snare bed. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people forget about the snare bed and all they're trying to do is match this up with the bearing edge of the drum. Yeah. And you end up bending your bottom hoop and then when you put your snare drum on a table, it'll rock back and forth. Right. Same thing with the top head, and then we'll adjust your white. Right. Same thing with the uh, top head, you know, like I did with the bottom, just making sure the hoop is, you know, even all the way around. Okay. I will not go as tight as the bottom head, though. Okay. Top head is not going to be as tight as the bottom head. Otherwise, then you would have a marching sounding hair. Reason why I'm turning the drum. This right here will sound different here than it does right here okay. to me, just because of the relation where I'm at to okay. it. So uh, if I'm like trying to dial something in, if you like then it I'll there, turn it and make sure you like it there too. Making sure it's the same because it will be different. That sounded ever since I've owned it. 